chapter number 12, verse number 1, we read these words, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, and we want to tell you about that in just a little bit in a moment, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. A race that's set before us. Everyone born again in the grace of God, you're in that race. And uh, you, you say, I, I really don't want to be. No, if you're saved, you're in that race. And we ought to be, we ought to have our eyes fastened on the prize of the Lord Jesus Christ and our eyes looking at Him and be diligently uh, running the race because it's a race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before Him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Father, we thank you, Lord, this morning for the reading of thy word. Lord, I pray that you'd help us, God, to rightly divide the word of truth. Lord, forgive me of my sins, my failures. God, I pray that, Lord, as we stand behind this pulpit, God, that you'd take over, God, and the Spirit of God might do the preaching here today. And Lord, we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're, we're compassed about with a great cloud of witnesses. Now, I thought much in, in, in the witness that we're compassed about with. And I believe Paul, the writer of, uh, to be the writer of the book of Hebrews, and I believe that he is referring back to those Old Testament saints that are mentioned in Hebrews chapter number 11, the great cloud of witness. Now, he, I also believe, is referring to the Olympic Games, which I believe Paul had a great interest in those games. And they were performed in great amphitheaters that were circular, and, and they, uh, so everybody could see, and they would uh, get the combatants or, or the, whoever were in the games, and they would be in the center of that ring, and a, and a great cloud of people around them could look in there and see what was going on. Sometimes, you know, they would do that. Uh, other times also, when somebody was being persecuted or somebody being fed to the lions, but there was a great crowd of witness around what was ever was going on in that amphitheater. And friend, you and I as believers are in a great uh, amphitheater. We're in a great place where we are doing one or two things. We're going forward for the Lord. Uh, we, are, we are trying our best to live for God, be in the race, stay in the race, run the race with patience that is set before us, or we are, are uh, just sitting down on the field not doing anything for God. Lord, help me that I would be in the race, faithful in the race, uh, doing what God wants me to do in the race, and be, you know, be about the Father's business as we end the near the finish line. Now, that race may have started a long time ago, in which it did, and some of you have been running the race a lot longer than I have, but Lord, help me that I would finish the race and that I would finish the race strong. I don't have to be in first place. I just want to finish the race. If I were, if I were uh, in a marathon down here, we've got a marathon runner amongst us this morning, and uh, he trains, and he, he'll run that marathon. My marathon would be maybe a quarter of a mile. So that'd be about my distance. But how far have you run, brother? What's your farthest far marathon that you've run? Yeah. Ten miles. Ten, only ten miles. That's a third of the way to my house. <laughs> if I tried that, I'd have to have an ambulance riding along beside me with an with an oxygen tank out the window and a mask on, amen, to make it that far. Ten miles. Now, that's a, that's a long way to me. And I congratulate you, brother, amen, for running ten miles. But listen, we, I don't know how far along you've been in your Christian experience, but I know one thing. We're all ending the, near the finish line. We're coming near the finish line, and we, because of the Lord Jesus Christ, He's the one that we should be concerned about that's watching us. 
and that he, he is cheering us on, so to speak. Now, I don't know that great cloud of witness, that if it's referring to those in the Old Testament in chapter number 11, if that be the case, I don't know how much they can see. I don't know how much they know about us, but we should always know that Christ is watching us in our race. He is seeing us, everything we do in our race, Christ is watching us. So we, we should be diligent in our race. A man may fail, but God's never going to fail in this race. We may fall down. We may trip up, but God is never going to trip up. I got rid of that, didn't I? If y'all didn't see that, amen, ask me after the service, and I'll tell you what happened. <laughs> Brother Frank, amen, make sure this part gets seen, amen. That'll get a lot of views on the, on the message. But this great cloud of witness, now I'm talking a little better anyway, this great crowd of witness that is around us, are, are the biggest part is the Lord Jesus Christ, and he watches over us daily. He looks at you. He sees where you're at. He sees where you're going. And he knows, my friend, he knows every step that you and I make in the race. So should we not be diligent in running the race? They bear witness. The witnesses bear witnesses of our faithfulness to God. Whether it be that cloud of witness that we find out in Hebrews chapter number 11 or, or not, we need to understand that Christ is watching us. He's seeing and knows our faithfulness to God while we run this race. So remember, friend, the race that you're in, there is an audience in this race that you're in. And not only is Christ watching on, but believers around you are watching on, and they're seeing you in the race that you're in. Other people notice whether or not that you're, that you're serving the Lord and doing the will of God. And, and friend, when you do that, I talked to a man this morning, and uh, I told him, I said, and I always try to encourage him, uh, you know, to go to church and to do what's right with the Lord. And I talked to him this morning, and I said, well, preaching starts at 11. Amen, you've got plenty of time. We that are in the race should try to encourage those that are not in the race to get in the race. Amen. And, and I believe that's what, it, what we should do as believers is to encourage others to get into the race. Now, friend, I've not, also, I've not always been as faithful in the race as I should be. And I'm going to be the first one to admit to you that. There's been times when I've been running the race in the spiritual life, in the Christian life, and I've been in a valley, and there was a big hill ahead of me. And that big hill ahead of me became a challenge. And sometimes I might get part of the way up that hill, and I back off a little bit because I'm tired in the race. But the best thing to do is when you run up on a hill in a race, you might slow down a little bit, but you just keep up a full head of steam and you keep, you keep trudging up that hill till you get to the top. Amen. Don't quit. Don't sit down. Don't wait. Just keep going for the Lord. Stay in the race. And here's how we do this. Number one, and I'll be about 15 minutes and I'll be done. Number one, first of all, you and I that are in this race, we need to take a stand against the evil of this world. Now there's evil in this world more than you and I have ever known. There is evil in this world. And we as believers, we as Christians, we as soldiers of the cross need to take a stand against the evil of this world. Now I don't know what kind of, uh, you know, what kind of evils that you may face, what kind of evils that we're going to face in these last days, but some of the things that I'm seeing now on the news, friend, are not things that are really pleasant to think we're going to face as believers. Franklin Graham says, and I believe it, and I've said it all along, and, and he confirms what I've been thinking and saying, we're headed for persecution as believers. We're headed, uh, uh, you know, in this country, right here, in this country, believe, if God doesn't change something, and it'll take God to do it, but if something doesn't change in our country, we as believers are going to face persecution. But we as believers need to take a stand against the evils of this world. Now, when you go to standing against sin and against the evils of this world, 
It's not going to be a popular thing. It's never popular to stand against what is popular. It's never popular to the worldly crowd to hear someone uh, take a stand against the things that they like to do. You know, and, 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 and people, I'm telling you today, as believers, we must take a stand against evil and for good and for righteousness. And again, that is not something that is going to be popular. And, and so we, as, again, as Christians, the worst thing that we can do as believers is to remain silent and not say anything. One of the things that has got our country in the mess it's in is because believers have remained silent on important things that have happened in our nation. Preachers have not had enough guts to stand up against the evil of this world and against things that have gone amok in our society and we've not said anything about it and now many evils have taken over our country because no one has had the nerve to stand up and take a stand against it. And by the help of God, friend, we should take a stand against the evils of this world and don't be silent. I got into it the other day. Well, I didn't get into it. Someone came along and made a, uh, made a statement to me uh, that a person that I work with said, told, told and, and I'll not get into all the details, I'll tell you later if you want to know, but said, you know, that person said they're going to come and sit on the front pew of your church. And I said, that's fine with me, and their jaw dropped open. And I said, when you see that person, tell them that they're welcome to come and sit on the front pew of our church. And so I didn't hear no more about it. Two or three days later, I saw that person that, she, that they were talking about, and I went over to that person, and I looked at him in the eye, and I said, you're very welcome to come and sit on the front, front pew of our church. And that person's mouth flew open. Listen, friend, we should not be afraid to stand against evil, but we also should be very welcoming to... To, to tell people the evil of their ways. Take a stand against it, not be afraid to take a stand against it, but let people know why we stand against what we stand against. And, well, you know, and, 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 and as believers, if we're going to run the race well, with these last days, we're going to have to take a stand against evil. See, we don't need to suck up to evil. We don't need to... To, to coddle up to evil and to, and to rub shoulders with evil, but we need to name what evil is and what's wrong and take a stand against those things. As never before. Lived in a community, uh, as, as we pastored a while back, we were in a community, and, and uh, uh, there was a, a store down the road that had never sold alcohol. Never had. It was within a, uh, it was about three-quarters of a mile from the church. And it was legally in a distance where they could do that. And it was asked of me, preacher, what do you think about it? I think it's wrong. I said, there's never been, it's never been on Rims Creek. It never has been on, you know, has, hasn't been on Rims Creek. And we don't need that on, in our community. So I did what I thought and what I believed to be was right. And I gathered many, many signatures against that establishment obtaining a, a license to sell alcohol. And however deep inside, I kind of felt like that it was futile, but I felt like also that it had to be known that that church was not in favor of that happening right there in their community. So... <coughs> We took a stand against it. Well, we took it, you know, we took it to the necessary authorities and they looked it over and, and said, well, such and such has a, has a legal right to do so. And I, but I let them know. I said, you know, they may have and, and it may be perfectly legal by, the, by, you know, by uh, state law and, and local laws. I said it might be perfectly legal, but I said I feel like we don't need it in our community. And so uh, we did what we could do. Guess what? They let them do it. They got the license. No matter how many people, no matter how many people, uh, you know, signed that petition. I forget there was a lot of people signed it. But they still got what they wanted 
but it was evil, and we took a stand against it, and I will do it again today. But friend, we must, as believers, take a stand against something. <coughs> you stand for something, or you will fall for anything. And believe me, I've saw that to be true. But as believers, we need to take a stand against evil. Number two, we need to keep our foot on the gas. How many of you men or women, either one, how many of you like to drive fast in a car? Now go ahead, be honest with you. I'm not asking if you've done it. I'm asking if you'd like to do it. I would love to get out on one of these racetracks where these cars run 200 miles an hour and just let me loose for about 10 laps. I mean, I would love that. It's hard enough for me to keep my foot off the gas going down the interstate. And I've seen some, I've seen some three-number figures on the, on the uh, speedometer before. I mean, that's just a thrill to me. Brother, it ain't been lately. I, I know the policeman back here, his ears perked up when I said that. It's been a long time. <laughs> oh, my, I've done got myself in trouble, ain't I? But, that, but that's a thrill to me. And if I, I, I always thought if I was a highway patrolman or a policeman, I'd love to give a high-speed chase. I mean, wouldn't that be? I mean, that's just, just me. And most people have some of that in them. And you know what I like to do when I'm out on the highway? I like to put my foot down on the gas. I know another man in here that also likes to do the same thing. Say amen, Brother Frank. Now, he's done told on himself two or three times about how he was done, you know, and watch that. I asked a boy the other day. He just bought him a brand new car. I said, all right. How, I knew he would do it. I knew the man when he got the car, the teenage boy, I knew he'd do it. And so I just asked him about a week later. I said, okay, how fast have you had it? And he got, he got real quiet. I said, you might as well tell me because I know you've done it and you're still at work, so I know you didn't get caught. I said, how fast have you had it? He said, well, it's got 160 on speed. I said, I know that. I said, how many of them have you seen? He, had, he hung his head and said, 120. And, uh, and I know that to be true. And it was, it was out in, it's out toward Black Mountain. I know where he was at when he done it. And it's on the interstate. And I said, you know, if they'd have caught you, you'd be in jail. And the other boy was there with him. And I said, you'd been in jail with him? And I ain't come to get you out. But he liked to get his foot on the gas. He said, that's just one time. I'm not going to do it no more. I said, you better not. You'll get killed. And, but, but we all like, you know, most people that drive a car, you know, that my left, my right foot gets so heavy sometimes, and I blame it on that's the ankle I broke. And it gets stiff, and it wants to, you know, it wants to relax, and every time it relaxes, it just goes down a little bit farther. My wife's the worst one in the world. Don't you know, don't let her sit over and be quiet. She's the worst one in the world. Put her foot on again. Listen, we as believers should be that way in our Christian life. We ought to want to push it to the push it to the metal. We ought to want to push on the gas and go harder and go faster for the cause of Christ. We as a church ought to be, you know, uh, listen, friend, there is no room, there is no, no way for this church to remain, to remain silent and to just cruise along. How many of you want that? How many of you want a church that just gets by and just cruises along? And, and hey, does anybody want that? If you do, I really want to meet you. I want to talk to you and find out why. How many of you want the church to go on full blast and wide open and do all we can for God? Raise your hand. Amen. And I believe that's what we should do. And I believe we should be wide open and doing what we can for the Lord and keep our foot on the gas, just, just wide open. Now, I've told you all I'm going to tell you about my high speed. Amen. It ain't been much in a while. And, uh, and, and I kind of watch out. And, and try, but listen, for God, I don't want to even be cautious. Amen. For the Lord, we not, all, we not even ought to want to be cautious of keeping our foot on the gas for Him and not worrying about what anybody says. Every time, and I did this just the other day, and I wasn't even guilty of nothing. But I was going along with traffic, and I, I, wasn't, even, I wasn't even speeding. What in the law enforcement would say I was speeding. But there sat a policeman. And you know what the first thing I did was look down at my speedometer. You know why I did? Because it's guilt, amen, it's guilt. And, and listen, I was very afraid of what that man might do if he pulled me over. But I hadn't done nothing, so I had nothing to worry about. One of the few times, but I had nothing to worry about. I have passed police officers, and brother, don't hold this against me, and I have passed police officers 
And I've been doing 10 mile over the speed limit, which if the speed limit is 70, that tells you how fast I was going. And the minute I passed them, and they were shooting too. I mean, they were, I mean, they were, they were looking. And the minute I passed them, I thought, oh, no, I'll just go ahead and pull over. But you know what? They wasn't after me. I guess they were after somebody doing 90. And, but immediately I felt relief. But I was scared because I had my foot on the gas. Listen, believers should not be scared because you shouldn't be worried about what somebody's going to catch you doing. Amen? We as believers should not be concerned about what people are going to think of us when we're full bore as a believer doing our best to serve the Lord and giving our all to God. We shouldn't care what the, what the uh, political police of this world or whatever you want to call them, we shouldn't care what they're going to say about us. We should keep our foot on the gas and keep pressing on for the Lord. We're in a race, and there's no time to give up. There's no time to sit back and watch and then watch people pass us by. We need to keep our eyes on the prize of the Lord Jesus Christ and stand against evil and keep our foot on the gas that we might, amen, that we might run the race with patience. We don't stop. We keep moving forward. We don't stop, and we don't quit serving God. I know many people that have quit serving the Lord talking to, to a fellow yesterday in a barbershop Friday and he brought up a, a man's name that he and I both knew 20 years ago and he was he, he could preach and he could quote scripture and he you know he he done everything right you would the last thing I saw him he was in uh, working in a convenience store he and his wife had separated and and, uh, you know, he, he didn't care a thing about the Lord and the things of the Lord. He quit in the race. He quit. He gave up. And he stopped doing what he should do. He quit serving God. And I was talking to this man about it. I said, do you know anything about it? He said, last time I saw him, he said, I saw him down in such and such place. And he said, I asked him, I said, do you ever think about Isaiah 53? Because he could quote the whole chapter. He said, he dropped his head and said, every day of my life. Listen, you can go ahead and quit on God if you want to give it a try. But I'll tell you, you'll never get away from serving God. It'll always be there. It'll always be there to, to uh, remind you that the best times of your life is when you're in the race running for the Lord, pressing toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. And then number three, stay focused on your goal. What is your goal? To, win, to, get, to cross the finish line faithful for God what's crossing the finish line either when God sends and the rapture comes and takes us out of here or when we die and go the way of the grave we're going to finish one of these days run well church run well that we might finish the race with patience and full of God and full of the grace of God and last of all you ain't going to run well unless you keep your tank full these race car drivers, they run around that track. They get in the curve, they hit the gas. They don't slow down to hit the gas to hang with the curve. But soon, if they're going to finish that race, they got to stop and get some fuel in that tank. And so they pull in the pit stop. And those guys run out there and change tires and fill the tank up with gas in 10 seconds or less, and they're back out on the race track. Now listen, friend. You and I need to keep our tanks full. How do you keep your tank full? Gables Creek Baptist Church is a pit stop, amen, where you pull in. And you should pull in at least three times a week and get your tank filled, amen. You should pull in and get your tank filled and get encouraged and, and the, let the Word of God speak to your heart and fellowship with God's people and get back in the race. We need to keep our tanks full by being I I around God's people and by going to church and serving the Lord and praying and reading the Word of God. Keep your tank full. If you don't, you're going to run out of gas. And if you run out of gas, amen, you're going to stop and you're going to backslide on God and you're going to find yourself out of church, out of fellowship with God, but you have, sometimes, you, you have to keep pressing on and keep your tank full. Preacher, I've been going through a battle. You know what you're doing? You're using some of the gas. 
you need to get back and, and you know get back to, to where you can get filled up again. Listen, I'm gonna tell you something. I can't do that, church. We missed a couple of Sunday night and Wednesday night because of uh, because of bad weather. There ain't nothing I can do about that. But I tell you what, my tank gets down around empty if I don't get to the house of God. So, friend, we need to keep our tank full and serve the Lord. Stay in the race. Don't get out of the race. Stay with God. Don't get out. Don't get away from God. Stay in the race. Don't give up. Don't quit. And find ways that you can run it better. Church, we need to, as a church, we need to stay in the race. We need to keep doing all we can. <coughs> we, don't need to, uh, we don't need to quit what we're doing. We need to do more of what we're doing. We don't need to be discouraged. We need to be encouraged in the things of the Lord. Church, we need to stay in the race. We need to amp it up just a little bit. Amen. We need to learn, run a little faster. Amen. We need to do more, all we can, to get the gospel out as a church. We need to do it. God help us to stay in the race. Father, we do thank you this morning, God, for the scripture. God, we thank you, Lord, for your help and your guidance. Lord, I pray, God, that today, God, we be encouraged to stay in the race. Lord, that we be encouraged, Father, not to give up, not to give in, but to stay in the race. Lord, that we might finish the race. Lord, dear Jesus, that we might gain a prize, Lord, at the end of the race, which is Christ Jesus. Lord, we'll thank you and praise you, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. I'm through. That's all. Amen. Anyone got anything on your heart before we dismiss? Anyone?